As much as I dislike job number one, I do enjoy getting out of the house. Morning. Um, it's like half ten. I'm going to get up and go in the bath and then... do nothing. Because... That's what we do in lockdown. There's an anime that I want to watch, so I might do that. We'll see. So much for enjoying getting out of the house. I've just been vomiting <clears throat> everywhere, and I'm now in the refresh area trying to eat and feel better, but it's not looking good. So, I woke up this morning and kind of out of nowhere just decided when I was getting dressed that today is the day that I want to reconcile my feelings about Harry Potter and JK Rowling and all that unfortunate business and yeah I'm at a point now where I can wear this again and I just decided officially that all the stuff that I was saying would be a possibility now actually holds true for me and I can allow myself to enjoy something that has been tainted by someone I do not enjoy. Um, my, my thoughts and feelings on this are literally transphobes ain't gonna keep us down and I can't let assholes ruin something that means a lot to me or has meant a lot to me. Um, I can't say it means a lot to me now because I'm still building myself back up to having those feelings, I suppose, if they ever are able to come back. But something that was a huge part of my childhood and the formation of me cannot be destroyed by the person who created it because it's so much bigger than her. And to be fair, most of my favourite fan fictions and the foundation for me getting involved in fandom and getting involved in writing fan fiction myself, I was writing long before that, but one of the major drivers, the things that really inspired me to write my own things in all senses, was my love of this series. And most of the stuff that has come out of it has been better than what she has written herself. It was the catalyst for some incredible works. And a lot of people who started off writing Harry Potter fan fiction went on to become successful authors themselves. Uh, it's a lot of the issues with the series have been addressed by fans in a way that she'd never be able to. <laughs> She's just been driving it into the ground ever since the end. Um, so yeah, it is, it's, once it becomes a phenomenon, it's, it's bigger than its origins. And I'm fine with that. So, yeah, today on this day of reconciling my feelings and allowing this to be okay again, um, I go online and see, well, I went on Instagram and I saw Stevie's stories and obviously that's the first place I go. And... That's how I found out that Sophie died. And, uh, 
I never listened to her music outside of clubs. I didn't realise that it was her music that I was listening to. So this loss isn't exactly going to affect me in the way that it will affect so and is affecting so many people. But it's still sad that we've lost another trans icon. But my takeaway from this, taking literally the only positive you can out of a loss like this is she's one of the few who wasn't killed. <laughs> Apparently. And if it was a slip and fall when she was viewing the full moon, then that's a f almost fitting way for her. Because it's in keeping with who she was. And it wasn't a supremely tragic end. It's still tragic because she was only 34 and this, there was so much else left for her to do and it's, it's never, it's never pleasant for someone to go when they're incredibly young but yeah, it's, it is definitely a relief that it wasn't another tragic murder. It was just a tragic accident. That's literally the only positive I can take away from this. And now, far too late, I need to go and find out more about who we've lost. Also, I feel really quite bad because there aren't very many well, there's more now, but there aren't very many trans people who are visible in the media that we can look up to. And I was aware of Sophie. It's hard not to be. But I never really looked into her music at all. Mainly because I'm so... They've been so disconnected from things for such a long time. And unless... Unless friends are constantly... Pretty much harping on about something that they're really, really passionate about. Um, the chances of me actually going and looking into it are slim because... Yeah, I just kind of vegetate. <laughs> It, it's been several years of me just saying, oh, I should look into this. And then in my limited free time, I just like sleep and put on YouTube in the background and barely pay attention to it. And there's only been a few random sparks that have come through. And that has usually been something on YouTube that actually caught my attention. And so then I had a brief spark of almost obsessively binge watching a few things until that feeling disappeared. And then I go back to the same old routine. Wanting to do more and achieve anything of value, but just... Not having the energy or the mental capacity to do anything and it's it has sucked. It's a lot better now. I'm actually able to do things. But I'm playing catch up with literal years of blank. Which sucks, and I'm not gonna think about that too much because it's really easy to blame yourself for wasting so much time and it's really easy to um, drag yourself down and kind of 
succumb to negativity about it when in actuality it's just you know shit happened what's done is done there is no getting that time back make the most of what you have now which if you're still struggling with mental health issues isn't going to be a lot a lot of the time and you can't beat yourself up for it but I'm medicated now, so I'm actually able to process things and do a lot more. It's just, it's not kickstarting the engine, it's warming things up slowly. And I think that's a lot of the reason why people get frustrated when they don't see immediate life-changing results on medication as well, or with therapy, is we want everything as quickly as possible and it's really hard to maintain patience when things have been really bad for a very long time and like I saw pretty significant change after a couple of days on my meds but I think that was just psychosomatic that was knowing that I was being listened to and helped out for the first time <laughs> and that gave me a spark of hope that things were going to change and that was enough to be able to carry me through and give me like a serotonin boost naturally thanks brain um and then after that the meds actually kicked in and started doing their thing and it's not a perfect fix but it has helped so much that I'm able to identify when things are starting to get bad and it doesn't mean that they don't get bad on occasion but I'm a lot more equipped I actually have the space in my head to be able to recognize when things are bad and take action on that so that it doesn't become overwhelming um because i personally do not want to go back to the space where every morning I wake up and all I can think of before I do anything is what is the fucking point of being awake I know people actually care about me um, um I know that some people would be mad if I wasn't around anymore but I still don't want to be here um should probably put a warning before all of this um, I, it's not like that now. I still have moments where I definitely doubt, uh, my value. Um, not just my sense of self-worth, but my purpose and how much people actually do genuinely like having me around. That will crop up every now and then. But I'm usually able to quash that by reminding myself that I'm fucking amazing. <laughs> um, uh, if I say it enough, I'll actually believe it. But, um, this is a rambling trip to nowhere about mental health, I suppose. Yeah, anyway, things are a lot better now. It's not perfect, but there is no such thing as perfect. And when you have mental health problems, you will always have mental health problems. It's just a matter of learning your triggers and learning coping mechanisms and ways to stop things from being supremely bad. And now I can recognize the signs because my brain is a lot more cooperative and is not just feeding me constant negative shit. Just minor negative shit every now and then on a Tuesday and a Friday. Always on a Friday, but it's what it is. So I've just um well, good morning. I I um I've been up and I've done some work. Um nothing for school yet. I'm gonna try and do some of that this evening actually, I've decided. Um, but just done some stuff for my theatre companies and I'm filming my, I'm recording my second episode of my podcast, um, this afternoon. 
but I just need to quickly pop to Sainsbury's to grab a few bits and pieces um, for tea tonight. And it's really weird. I um, I got in there and it's busier because it's a Sunday. I've tried to avoid weekends too much if I can. I try to avoid them if I can. Um, it was quite busy. There were quite a few people not wearing masks who seemed to always be near me for some reason. And then I'm in this big coat and the heating was on in there because it was meant to be snowing today and it's not snowed an ounce. Anyway, the heating was on. My mask was sort of digging into my nose for some reason. That was making me warm. And all of a sudden I just started to panic. And I don't have panic attacks. Um, you know, I don't really get anxiety about that sort of thing or anything um, in terms of you know, um, feeling claustrophobic or feeling, uh, but I just suddenly felt really quite uneasy. And usually I try and use my very rare limited time that I go to Sainsbury's at the moment, sort of as a bit of a chance to look around, see if there's anything new, um, sort of my only time out. But I just wanted to get the hell out of there. And I could feel myself getting warm and hotter and getting myself more anxious. I wasn't having a panic attack. Um, I don't think I've ever had a panic attack, so I wouldn't really know what a proper one feels like. But I just started to feel really quite... Pfft, just hot and bothered and anxious and just wanted to go out of there. So that was quite interesting. I feel okay now that I'm sat here. I'm still warm, mainly because I'm in this coat. But I feel okay now, now that I'm back in my car and my mask off. I think seeing people without masks on... You know, yes, I understand that they might be exempt, but the majority of them pr probably was not were not and it's the fact that they insist uh, you know if, if they are exempt absolutely fine um but there's no need to keep trying to get close to people you know there's someone like almost leaning over my shoulder to try and get something and they're talking and you know they're in with somebody they shouldn't be in with somebody because then i don't know how they got in with somebody because they're stopping people from going in, in pairs at the door my guess is that they went in separately and then just joined up but the fact that they're talking to somebody whilst leaning over me you know, you just think, oh, you've got no respect, which makes me realise that they're probably not exempt. Because if they were exempt, they would still be, they wouldn't wear a mask, but they'd still be socially distancing, they'd still be aware of other people. So that annoyed me, and I think that just gets to me. You know. I've talked for quite a while now, but it's just easier to talk at the moment. Just talking it out. But it's, it's strange, because I never... You know, I've just sort of got on with life these past however many months, 10 months or whatever it is. I've just sort of got on with life and done what I needed to do. Never really felt too bothered about things. Sort of just seen it as a bit of a roller coaster. I remember back in March or April last year, I remember queuing at this Sainsbury's and queuing if the, if the shop is there. I should have just spit to the camera. If the shop is over there, I remember queuing all the way around, sort of over there, you know, it, halfway around the car park. Um, you know, and I just sort of, even that, even seeing people cut turn up, one, I remember one woman rocking up with like a full gas mask on. Even dealing with that, it was like, okay, strange, but I'm getting on with life. I'm being fine. But that today just felt really odd. And it's quite ironic because today's, podcast that we're about to record is all about mental health and mental health and how the drama and theatre can help with mental health so it'd be interesting if I feel okay to write to talk about this today I don't know I'm okay though I'm not you know I'm absolutely fine I think as well because I spoke to people this week I spoke to a couple of friends this week um who are really struggling with lockdown and are struggling personally and I think all that hearing their stories just sort of not got to me I'm, I'm i want to listen to people's stories and help them and you know i feel proud to help them as i can but i think just sort of hearing their stories and realizing how much people are struggling makes you sort of go God, this is such you know people the fact that people still can't take it seriously is worrying anyway fine now i'm gonna go home film my pot well record my podcast in a bit Get a bit of work done and get ready for a school week ahead. But thanks for listening. It's taken me about 40 minutes, but my legs are hanging off the bed. I'm fully rotated sideways. 
However, I am still letting him down. This probably has a lot to answer for why my sleeping pattern's crazy, so. Um, it's Sunday. Um, without revealing too much, I don't think she watches this, but still. Um, a certain person's birthday is coming up, and it's a big one. Um, and me and a friend are working on something, um, as a gift for her. But we're a little short on, let's say, supplies. <laughs> um, so I've just done an urgent call out on Facebook, and I'm, I'm hoping, I think I'm technologically advanced enough to have made it so that they can't see the post. Um... But if they can, the jig's up. But I don't think they can. I think I've done it right. Um, so, I'm going to be monitoring that today. Um, I've just about convinced myself to have a shower. Um, however, I've not convinced myself to shave. So, we're probably just going to have to put up with Harry Mary for a couple of days. Um, because I'm just not in the mood. And I only have to look at myself for these videos, so I can just be oblivious, and that'll be fine. Um, but yeah, also I did not watch Thor last night, I just got, decided to skip all of Phase 2, so I've started at Civil War instead, which I think is a good point. So, good times. Right. Happy Sunday for me, Monday for you. Good luck with the week. Love you all. I didn't want to go home, but I was sent home. <clears throat> I was sent home. So... You know, I feel bad. I feel like shit. I wish I could be earning money right now and God knows what, but um, hey. When you get ill, you get ill. And I need to stop being hard on myself for it. <laughs> so. Today I am working on actually getting the patterns sorted for the glove. And I thought the only way I'm actually going to accurately figure out how to get it to work and fit my hand perfectly is by taping up my hands. Um, which is interesting. I may have made a mistake, but I just need to size it up very slightly for the glove underneath, and this should be accurate placement of all the bits. Um, this is fun. <laughs> I'm way too amused. <laughs> Happy Sunday! I am currently hoping that I'm in that. I might not be. We'll find out. Um, it's Sunday. So that means it's skincare day. Uh, I'm going to Dermaplane. And then do my skincare. I'm probably going to speed through me shaving my face. And then pick up when I do... I've got a spot there. That was nice. Pick up when I start doing actual skincare.
Um, so I have shaved my face. I had like a spot there, which is now bleeding. Um, and then after that, skin care stuff always soaks in a lot better. So I will moisturize. Do I moisturize first? No, I don't. Uh, I'm going to use, that's eye brightening. Got um, a Balance Me Soothing Serum here, just in case. My skin gets a bit irritated from that. But yeah, my nose and here is where I get on my jawline, it's not so much spots as it is um, this thing called folliculitis, which is inflamed hair follicles. Um, but like I do this and exfoliate and stuff and it helps. Um, it's a lot better than it used to be. I used to just have so much bad skin texture. Now I am going to put some moisturiser on. They've discontinued this one, which makes me really upset, but I use the Lizelle. Um, skin repair moisturizer during the day and I love it um, I need to work out which one they've got to replace this because it's oh, I love it so much I think someone said you're supposed to do your skincare in the order that they go from thinnest product to thickest product but I can never work out which one that one is um, just know what works for me quite a big inflamed bit there so I'm gonna pop on some um, it's like anti-aging stuff around your eyes because why not you know I think someone said from the age of 25 that's when your skin starts you should start using anti-aging stuff because that's when your skin stops producing its own collagen that could be a lie stops doing something um, Yes. Cat's here. It's exciting. I don't even know if you're supposed to put it on your actual eyelids or just under your eyes. Uh, and then this is an eyeliner that I got from Revolution. And this side is just a liner and then this side is a serum for your lashes um which the tip's obviously really dirty because i'm disgusting but as someone who does like a lash lift i want to get um revita lash is that what it's called because I want long lashes. Got a few lashes here which just grow straight down which is really annoying they're also really pale um but yeah that's me done with my sunday routine you joined in with a uh, with us at atc with our um, virtual uh, christmas do as a podcast two as filmed as and as currently as being edited and checking in uh, while I'm taking a five second break to drink my coffee, which isn't possible 
when I'm wearing my mask. I shouldn't take it off for too long though because there are still fumes in this room. But, there's the bracer. It's taped together. There's one bit that's been taken off from the very bottom that is currently in the bowl waiting for the glue to dry so that I can smoosh them together. The pauldron for the left shoulder. Done. Bits of the uh, glove, the fingers, the armor of that, there, front bit, there. Uh, and that's the progress that I've made so far. I've patterned out the entirety of the scythe. They did that last night. Stopped it about one o'clock in the morning. Uh, the belt buckle skull thingy is there. The very base of it, which is also waiting for the glue to dry. Then I'm going to go downstairs and grab some water so that I can actually use the foam clay properly so it'll adhere to stuff. Uh, down here, this is my Dremel which I'm going to be using in a sec to smooth down some of the edges, get it to a nice 45 degree angle, and then I can glue them together without issue. And then, over there, uh, along with my bowl from this morning and my plate, is my heat gun, which is very necessary, so that I can shape things better. The fun of foam. So I didn't send this to Annie yesterday just in case everyone hadn't got theirs, theirs already and they have so yes I got mine. I ate all my sweets already, I put the rainbow up, it's sitting on top of a black skull. I've whispered so many worries into that little guy already and the soap smells gorgeous, oh my god check out. If you're not part of this group who adds videos to here, check out that, that company. Look how pretty. Wow. As I say, just finished editing and are currently uploading podcast too, although it doesn't go live until Friday. So got plenty of time, but nice to get ahead of stuff. Ticking things off my old list, which I made today of things I need to do this week. There's a lot on it, but it makes me feel better doing a list, always does, and ticking things off. Um, as I said earlier, the podcast was about mental health. And um, considering what I was talking about earlier, about feeling a bit overwhelmed all of a sudden it was quite nice just to talk about it and I feel much better now I feel good um so I'm gonna have roast dinner now with the family so that's fun um and I had a film day yesterday and I think I'm just gonna watch another film tonight I'm gonna just stick on a good film and chill out I've been on the computer now for three hours or so doing my well more than that actually more like four doing my editing and recording the podcast and uh some other bits for my theatre company and prep him for next week at work so um so yeah i'm gonna chill out for the rest of the evening and uh yeah well i've got a lot to do this week at the moment i'm feeling motivated i'm feeling positive so long may that continue it probably won't especially if i'm tired tomorrow morning but Yeah. Sorry, I must seem a bit, I know I feel it seem a bit all over the place, but I don't know. It's been a strange day. Remember to uh, look after yourselves, people. <laughs> Trying to make popcorn so we can enjoy it.
<laughs> so it's literally it's just a peanut gallery and like annoying him. Be <laughs> like, you haven't swung hard enough, mate. Try again. <laughs> Yeah, I'm going to commentate. There we go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it popped up. Can we just take a moment to appreciate that you called us his friends when not a single one of us really gives a shit about anybody here? Yeah, that's that's really escalating things when it's uncalled for. I did not sign a contract. It's not happening. Oof. Oh. Cry, maybe? Excuse me? Uh, I'm gonna cast Thaumaturgy. Um, I'm basically just gonna amplify my voice and start yelling stuff. Like, let's get ready to rumble and all that. <laughs> Come on, you blue! Did you no, that's not at all what I'm saying. Mortal Kombat! Yeah, I just want to fuck around. <laughs> Thank you. Good evening. I'm still alive. Thank you for asking. I just watched yesterday's vlog and Anna mentions that our cats are the old people in the vlogs, but um, it's actually Dylan. I'm not going to say how old Dylan is, but Dylan's disguised as a young person. That's all. Good night. So it's like eight o'clock and I'm just sat.
Well, I was going to do some reading, but then I can't decide what to read. Um, so I'm going to go edit or start editing so that I can just add people in as they send them to me. And that way, hopefully, by about half past 11, I can get this rendered and then get to bed. Because, yeah, I'd like to go to sleep. All of this later on, not most of this. Attach. Another one there. Those two. Got one, two, one, two. And make the eyelids. Mm, we should be good to go. Oh, and the little scully boy. This is the first round of plumping him up. I also need to bend it with some heat. And I got you. Making progress. <laughs> 